don't know if it was because they just felt flat to me for some reason. Um, and I don't know if that was just me or... I think if we're talking uh, men's quarterfinals, the, yes. the, the good thing was that all of the games were competitive. There weren't the hu- any huge blowouts in any of the four matches. And I think there has been some concern on both uh, hemispheres that uh, maybe it's the new rules, maybe it's the way some teams adapt to them better than others, maybe it's injuries, but there has been a propensity for a blowout score most weeks. Um, but I think we got four relatively competitive quarterfinals where there wasn't a lot between the teams. I, I, I was there on Friday. I thought Catalan let themselves down, um, made too many mistakes. And, and, and I think, again, when you fall behind in a, in a winner-takes-all match, mm-hmm. your process that everybody talks about tends to go out the window. They, they looked more a collection of individuals rather than playing to any degree of pattern. Uh, Warrington were supremely efficient but you got the impression there that they were never going to lose, that the indiscipline of the Dragons was was going to undermine themselves. I actually thought that the the best of the four games was St Helens and Huddersfield. Um, I thought Saints were pushed uh, probably in a way that they haven't been most of this year. Uh, and, and Huddersfield clearly are a team on the up. I think when we spoke last week, I, I had a feeling that they were going to get their first win against Leeds, it came in the most dramatic mm. of fashion. But because of that, it breeds a certain confidence and belief that Ian Watson ways probably are going to work. And the, and the players suddenly realise what it is they're being asked to do. And um, I, I thought they, they never went away against St Helens. And for that game, again, to go to the, the last set of six before you knew who won it, um, that, was, that was an outstanding game with real intensity to it. Regan Gray showed it his flashes of, of absolute brilliance and the fact that he signed a new uh, deal to, to keep in rugby league and, and, and the union hands off him is, is again, great news. Clearly Tommy Makinson went off very early, which disrupted saints and Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook had to have a, a head test, fill in your own joke there. Um, but obviously that meant that their rotation were affected, but, but Huddersfield were really, really gritty. Um, and, and Darnell McIntosh's try in the corner was, oh, was fantastic as well. So well, that was a great game. I thought Holland Wigan that started off um, Saturday, again, just overly physical, but you know, if you're old school, exactly what we want to see, there wasn't a huge amount of skill involved uh, on, on either side, which is not to detract from some of the performances. I thought Adam Swift was absolutely outstanding for, for Holland. And, um, you know, clearly they learned the lessons of the week before as to how to play Wigan. Um, Wigan didn't move the ball enough to, to make you think that they were going to score enough points. And, and the whole pack, particularly Tavita Satai, absolutely monstered their Wigan uh, counterparts and deserved winners. But but it was well, I, one for the purists. I, I, I thought he, he got away with chucking the ball at Sam Powell's head, though, when he scored that try. I, 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 not many people picked up on that. I certainly didn't pick up on it on the TV. I, I thought he got away with that. One, but. I don't know if he was throwing it at Sam Powell or just throwing it in exuberance that he'd, he'd scored a try. But Sam Powell just got in the way of it. Clearly, the referee didn't seem to think that it was a deliberate ploy. And I think had he wanted to genuinely throw it at Sam Powell, he would have hit Sam Powell. But, <laughs> well, he, uh, he got in the World Cup's team of the week this week, so he must have been impressive. I also think that that sets a marker for the rest of the season. It, you know, Again, Wigan have, uh, have not managed to complete the job in the Challenge Cup and been out-muscled. In a, it, it was the semi-final last year. It's been in the quarter-final this year. That will leave them scratching their heads, thinking, what do we need to do um, when it comes to those those big knockout games, whereas Hull now need to build on the back of that because we've seen it before that they can get up for a cup tie, but how do they transfer that into every week performing like that as and and, and getting to a grand final uh, and maybe even winning it? But I think, the, uh, yeah, the, John, was it Jamie Peacock was saying he now views them as the favourites in the competition because that is the marker that they've set down. I think their semi-final against St Helens will be Absolutely fantastic. Can't wait for that. Um, and, and I think the Salford-Castleford game wasn't great in terms of the, the quality for the 80 minutes. 
but you could not take your eyes off it. And, 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 and as, as we say, if you get two teams who are playing at a level where they match each other, it's just drama. And, and it's everything we love about the sport. You know, and, and, and does it really matter that, you know, we didn't see a lot of Jake Truman in that game? And, uh, you know, mate. Yeah, maybe it, it was always destined that it was going to end in golden point and that there could only be one person on that field that was going to settle that. And uh, I, I don't know. I thought we had four games that, that fairly reflected some of the best things we've got in the sport. And, and either, you know, that was drama to the end, that was physicality, that was outright skill, or, or you know, it, it was the ability to, to last the full 80 minutes. But I, I, I thought as, as a four... Uh, we, we saw some great games in, in the Challenge Cup. The, the, the revival of the Challenge Cup itself, perhaps, this weekend. Maybe I was being overly harsh because I'm on tablets for migraines. Maybe that's maybe that was my uh, maybe that was my problem. I think what we can say is, uh, I know this is the, the, the buzzword now around Huddersfield is uh, trusting the process. And I think we've said this all the time about Ian Watson and Huddersfield. You can see that they're going to get better and you can see they're going to put a run of wins together at some point. There's, there's no cause for concern with Huddersfield. And to run St. Helens close again, uh, you can see that that run will come sooner rather than later. Catalans, as you say, they're, they're in discipline. And, and again, that's Warrington twice now in the space of a few weeks have beaten them. Uh, home and in, <laughs> on British soil. Um, mm, Catalans inconsistency. Consistently inconsistent, as they say. They've made a great start to the season in Super League, but they haven't been able to back that up in two games against Warrington. And um, there's a, there's an ingredient there that is still missing. You know, I, I didn't think James Maloney got his hands on the ball enough. Um, now, I'm, I'm sure that if we look at the stats and the way Steve McNamara wanted them to play, that... You know, that, that may have been because Warrington were, were good at denying the ball. I also think... Um, you know, Michael McAlorum clearly isn't fully fit at the moment and it's such a key position um, that, again, it's going to take a little bit of time to get that spine working in whatever way Steve McNamara wants them to. But they nullified Sam Tompkins a little bit and that seemed to take a lot of the attacking edge out of Catalan as well. Um, I, I, I don't know that... that Something was made. Ben Garcia was superb. I mean, he, again, puts puts himself about. You, you can't ask for more effort from that. Mike McMeekin is a threat, but they need to find a way of getting the ball into his his hands and in space a little bit more. Um, I, they seem to me to be stuck between two philosophies. One is the try that they scored, which is let's just throw throw the ball between our legs and do whatever it needs to get to to get it to someone who can can get it over the whitewash, and let's be overly playing whatever it is the coach is asking them to play, that is a very structured style. And um, the last couple of weeks, they, they seem to have fallen between those two. So the one thing I will say is if they can get the ball to Tom Davis, I reckon he's one of the best finishers we've got in Super League. Uh, really, really impressed with him alongside the likes of a Makinson and a Tom Johnson. If, if, if I was um, Sean Wayne, I'd, I'd seriously be looking at, at Tom Davis's international quality, but they've got to get him the ball. In, in his hands and, be, and and the space to be able to use it. Faray, I think, is, is a great addition. Um, but that, that balance over the last two weeks has been lacking for some, some reason. Uh, we'll talk about the draw and then we'll talk about something else and then talk about the women's competition because it kind of needs to wrap up the men's bit first. Um, couldn't ask for a better draw in both competitions, but in the men's first, Saints Hull, as you mentioned, a nice clash of, of two sides. And then obviously you've got the great Dowell Powell Derby between Castleford and Warrington. The stories write themselves for that one. Um, with the seemingly, you know, half the cast team following Dowell Powell across the Pennines, you know, it's, it's like what happens in the women's game these days. Uh, more of that to come. Um, that's going to be a, a fascinating semi final. They're obviously got, they're going to play each other at some point in the future, but. Now it's going to be on the telly for everyone to see on that on the BBC. We've got a month to build it up and we've got to make the most of this rivalry. Um, clearly, Hull and St. Helens have had some fantastic battles in, in cup games recently. Um, and we need to clearly be, be not only highlighting the fact that Hull are the up-and-coming force and want St. Helens crown, uh, but they genuinely do start that game. I would say if we were to put you know odds on it, 
as of today, a, a virtual level playing field. Um, the other game, you know, if you cannot get stories out of Cass and Warrington meeting at, at this stage in the competition, you know, we, we've got the, the whole idea that is Daryl Powell going to go out with a trophy? If he is, is the most likely trophy, the Challenge Cup. Now the team that stands in his way is the one that he's going to... And, you know, that, that writes itself. You rightly say there isn't a cast of a player at the moment who isn't being linked with, with Warrington today. It's Ollie Holmes is going to be the next one that's going over there. Peter Matauti has supposed, already signed. Paul McShane isn't. He's going to stay at, at Castleford. And there's all the question marks over... Uh, over Truman and whether he's going to uh, you know, be wearing amber and black or primrose and blue. If we cannot get copy out of this, and what we actually want is now some people on both of those sides to realise that this is a story and they need to play to it. Um, and you know, we we want Daryl Powell to be saying, you know, I, I have I have absolutely no compulsion in in even talking to Warrington for the next month about players they might want for next year. They're in my sights. I want them. And we want Warrington to be saying, uh, you know, we, we're not ringing Daryl for, you know, we, we have got our own agenda here and uh, he may be with us next year, but, uh, you know, we're going to do everything we can to absolutely undermine the, the team that he's going to be you know, playing against us. And, um, you know, we have to make the most of it. We, we talk all the time about it's not about suits, it's about players and personalities. But what Zach Hardacre said, before the first whole game was fantastic in terms of there is newspapers full of what, what, you know, you got, you, you, you got to live up to it. Jake Connor didn't in the first mm. game, Zach himself didn't in the second game and, and, and then came on and admitted it. But this is the kind of stuff that will sell rugby league and, and get viewers. So uh, the, the draw could not have been better from that point of view. Uh, Oliver Holmes would have some very big uh, head tape, to live into as a blonde forward if he moved over to Warrington, wouldn't he? Uh, but I would uh, say to uh, Warrington World, if you're thinking about doing a podcast, and we'll talk more about podcasts later, don't put him with um, Tom Lynham. Probably not a good idea. Um, no, no, no. We, we like you all. Sorry. Right. <laughs>